Hey guys, welcome back to Cypress Steel Forge. And as I keep saying over and over, we're up to something new and fun again today. Uh, you know what? We were doing the Celtic ring knife earlier. If you saw that video, that's why I'm dressed very much the same, minus the headgear that I completely sweated through this morning. Uh, if you watch that video, you see little clips of me hammering on something that was the ring knife. And uh, you probably couldn't tell it at that point, but this is actually copper. This is not steel. Uh, it's gonna be another wand kind of thing. So uh, what I was thinking uh, after I made the fire wand, which you all have seen if you saw that video, which was for a friend of mine who likes D&D, &D, uh, I thought, hey, why not do something for that whole party, you know? Uh, I had to do a little bit of research on the subject, but I was going to do a uh, druidic focus. If you know d d you know what that means. But basically, it's just another one. So what I've done is I've cut down a piece of oak. Now, this is that white oak that we did, made the uh, fighting sickles out of. It comes out real nice looking. Uh, so we've got a little bit of the, uh, the bark and that, that nice character on there. I don't know how long that's going to last. We're going to have to uh, sand it just a little bit. The idea is I'm going to set this in here about like that and, and kind of have a, you know, the, the nice oak and the copper wand sort of thing. But uh, that's not the new part. We've done wands, obviously. The new part's going to be that we're going to take this here to the, uh, the mini lathe again and see if I can't do something new with it, which, well, that's, that's a low bar seeing how I've turned exactly two things now. So, uh, one of the things that's changed is uh, this here. I, uh, the mini lathe didn't come with this as a spur bit, and what it does is it holds the wood. Now, what I had before was a little, uh, basically it looked like a little drill bit screwed it into it but uh, the problem I had was over time it was starting to loosen up and it put a hole in the air and it was just wobbling so I'm hoping this will solve that uh, videos I saw said it would we'll find out I still got to drill a hole on on the one end for the little uh, uh, crap little spike thing at the back it, it has a name I can't remember but uh, Anyways, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this over to the sander real quick and knock down some of these sharp edges. Because this thing don't like when the, uh, the chisels hit edges much. And then we're going to get started. Alright, that, that didn't take long. It's, it's been maybe a minute now. You can see I just knocked the, the corners off it a little bit. Uh, the little sharp points. So it'll turn. Hopefully it'll, it'll turn better. But uh, anyways, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to attach the, I guess I need to, ugh. Okay, I'm going to take that to the sander, flatten that out, and then we're going to hammer this into it, and it sets into the chuck, and we'll be all set. Now, the idea is that once I've got it done, uh, or at least started to, because, you know, it's supposed to be kind of wonky. It, it's not supposed to be completely symmetrical. Uh, like the other one was this I want the wood to kind of have some Really weird stuff going on with it. And so uh, What's going to happen is I'm going to drill it and I'm going to drill it pretty deep I don't, don't have like a, a straight-up tang going on and this has got to get ground down Obviously, I want the copper to show through But it's going to sit pretty deep in there like the wood is taking over it or something so uh, once once I get it uh, kind of turned on the lathe, that's when we're going to get to the really interesting stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take some of these hand chisels and, and, and carving tools and see if I can't carve the wood. I've just never done it. I've never carved wood. I've used these chisels all of... A couple of times, uh, I'm, I am learning to use the flat one to, for, you know, slotting. Uh, that really helps. <laughs> I was able to fix three hammers inside of like 10 minutes that I had been messing around with forever, driving nails and all that stuff. It's, 
So, you know, I'm learning and I thought we could, we could do something fun with this. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with turning it and then we'll go from there. Loosen this up and bring that in just a touch. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you what, this thing constantly amazes me. It's turning down beautifully. Let's have a look. That is, yeah, that's roughly where I wanted that. Let me dig in here to the slanted one for catching edges and turning down that front bit that I meant to get out and keep out. Some of these I haven't figured out exactly what they're for. All right, so let's, uh, Paper in this uh, front end, and then we're just gonna go right on down it. Now, I don't know how well y'all can see that. It is, it is rough, it is wonky, and it is actually exactly what I'm shooting for. I know uh, the, generally the idea of turning something is to make it nice and symmetrical. But it is not what I'm going for today. So this thing's actually working out beautifully for me. And the next thing we're going to do after this last little bit, which... Uh, I mean, I'll speed all this up for y'all, but uh, real time, it's been about 19 minutes right now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, 20 minutes to turn something on this thing, that's that's pretty cool. But uh, what I'm gonna do from there is I'll take, uh, you know, I just brought a pack of pencils out here. I don't know where I did with them. Anyways, I'll kind of sketch out where I want to carve and we'll start the carving process. Now that's going to take way more than 20 minutes, I guarantee. 
But let's get uh, let's get this finished up. guys so uh, what I've done so far uh, is I took and bored out a pretty good size hole now the reason I went with such a large hole is the idea is that <laughs> and again you got to appreciate the game to understand what I'm talking about but the idea was that this was once a wizard's wand and it has been now taken over by nature to become the druidic focus so this handle is not supposed to look like it was meant to be. It's supposed to look like it grew over something that was a once a wand already. So, yeah, it's supposed to look crude. Again, we're going to shine this part up. That, that part's going to be fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to start taking the... Uh, yeah, we're going to start taking the chisels... And seeing if I can figure out how to work them. Uh, again, woodworkers, I suggest you look away because I genuinely have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, guys, I need a lot more practice with chisels. I very obviously don't know what I'm doing, so took it over to the belt sander and got that nice rough, got some, some twist in there. So I'm going to bring it over here, and that's what I'm going to continue to do, make it look like growth. It, yeah, so here we go. Nothing wrong with trying new things. I definitely will go back to those chisels again and again. I will learn them. But for now, I, I want to get this done and move on with stuff. Said I will go back to the chisels. I think I want to try to carve in another hole right here real quick. I really want it to look like it's it ate the you know the the wand. Actually, I might go on the back side. Yeah, have an opening here where you can see it, and then an opening here. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I, I've definitely got more experience using the belt sander to do things than I do the chisels. But, uh, yeah, you know, use what you're, you're comfortable with, but try things. Eh, got a little bit of work here, but yeah, kind of, I want it to be rough. 
So we'll just polish this, you know, through maybe like a 400 and then uh, probably a nice dark stain. Probably that same dark walnut we used on that last one. It went really well with the copper. So, well, let's keep going. All right, so we've got it pretty well the way I want it right now. Uh, looks like vines growing up through it. You'll be able to see the copper through there. And then got a little knot hole in the back here. I said it just looks rough. So what we're gonna do is pop this thousand grit off because we ain't ready for that yet. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna put some 220 on there and just kind of give this a bit of a polish. And then uh, it'll be about time to glue it up. Now we're not gonna use a lot of epoxy on this one here. Uh, normally, if I'm making a knife or something, we, we definitely don't want any uh, empty space inside the handle. We, if your tang don't fit perfectly, which, you know, it shouldn't. You should have some room for the epoxy, but you, you want to fill every every bit of that up with the epoxy afterwards. Yeah, I'm about to get inside this hand sand some of it. Yeah, but, and sand the inside of the holes a little bit but again you know not too much we that kind of rough grown in look is what, what we're going for here it should look like it's just growing but at the same time we don't want anybody to get splinters what i'm gonna do is get with somebody who dms on a regular basis i got a friend and he can help me create some stats for this thing uh, the fire dance wand is going to a, uh, a guy, <laughs> he's got a sorcerer tiefling character, for those who knows what that is, wonderful, otherwise don't worry about it, uh, just basically they're going to add like, uh, I think a plus one to any fire magic they do, let's polish this thing up, be good for today, because it is warm, alright, so, uh, yeah, this is pretty well it, man. I, I, I ran it through the 220. I'm pretty happy with it. It's supposed to be really rough. It's supposed to look like nature, like it's growing. So uh, what we're going to do now is get the uh, the copper wand, and we're going to run it through the 220. I will, we're gonna hit it with a 400 and that will polish the parts that need to be polished while leaving those black spots. And we're gonna have some dents and grooves and it, it's gonna look like it's been around and it's been through stuff. All right, so again, super fast and I think that's probably going to be it because I don't want it to be super shiny. I want it to be visible through the knot hole. So, yeah, I think this is pretty well done. We're going to do a little bit of glue up. All right, it's uh, dried up. So, you can still see that through there, you know. I like it. So, let's, uh, let's get this stain on here. I will say that uh, having used it on that piece of cedar the other day, I was really surprised and really happy at how dark and uh, how much of that the natural uh, grain just really popped through it and it just looked so, so beautiful. And uh, yeah, I think this is just exactly what I was shooting for here. It just, it looks so dark and, and deep. Oh, that, it, it just sits down in those little curves and it darkens them and gives it artificial shadows. I, I wasn't shooting for that, it just happened. So 
in the end, I got what I was after here. This is going to be a, a beautiful piece. We're just going to get out our handy dandy beeswax. I said this one's here is going to be for a different member of the party, and uh, I think we'll title this little mini series How to Make Your D&D Party Real Happy, because uh, I think any Drew would be, be thrilled to have that thing right there. That's uh, that's real pretty like but uh anyways that's gonna do it for this here uh project and this here video guys i appreciate y'all so much I, I i say it all the time but i i truly mean it i i can't express enough to y'all how much this whole thing is meant to me um I'm gonna <laughs> this this part's a little hard for me i i have struggled with uh, my mental health uh, a long time. I, uh, you know, after the army and, and, and whatnot, I, I just was not in a great place. And uh, I finally, finally decided to get help. And, and guys, if you're struggling, get help. It, it's the best thing you'll ever do. And part of getting this help was, was this. I, I can do this, I love this. Yeah, it's not getting me out of my shell and making me more uh, social. We're working on that part. But I can sit here in front of the camera. I couldn't do that before. I, I could have never dreamed of doing this without, without getting help, uh, without, you know, working on the anxiety and stuff. Uh, for those who knew me from my Army days, yeah, that was self-medication, and that was bad. That was a lot of alcohol. So uh, y'all y'all have been an important part of this. And I, bottom of my heart, thank y'all so much. Y'all take care.